What is going on everybody? This is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone. Today we're going to do something we've never done before and that is a reaction video. We're going to watch somebody else's video and I'm going to do a reaction to it. I don't usually do these but I got enough inbox messages, DMs and stuff about this and then I went and I watched this video and I was like oh my goodness this is probably this is super cool, super cool. Uh, dude named Jim Lil, I think he's out of Nashville, great guitar player, really good production value. What a, a fantastic video, kind of attacking the whole Tonewood myth. Not attacking, he's way nicer than that. I think he's a super nice dude, but I think he really wanted to investigate this for himself. Remember a couple years ago when we did the Telecaster fence post video, this is like that, but like, next next level so we're going to break down kind of what he did um maybe if i would have done anything different and also what it really means and how it really applies to real life uh so i'll tell you what let's let's get into this thing over the holidays i wanted to find out the truth about where the tone comes from in an electric guitar don't we all? one electric guitar sound different from another when they're plugged into the same amp. I've read and heard all sorts of ways that every single part on the guitar can make a difference in the sound, but I don't actually know if any of that's true. I wanted to take the time to actually this is test great. them and capture this is the great. results with audio and video so you guys can see for yourself and decide what you think is important too. First thing I did was email three very high-end guitar builders whose guitars I've personally played and enjoyed very much. And I asked them the question, what five factors in an electric guitar make the most difference in the amplified sound? Here's how they responded. Okay, so first of all, let's break this down. Um, obviously, these are people that he respects, probably people that we respect. Uh, you'll see the guitar that he uses later in the video. It's not cheap stuff. It's really good stuff. Uh, so, first person, body wood, neck wood, pickups as the microphone and tuner for the previous two. Obviously, already, we know this is wrong because um, pickups are not microphones. It's not how they work. Electric guitar transfers energy in a completely different way than an acoustic guitar, and it does not work like in a microphone. So already, you're kind of going down the wrong road with what you think is a priority here. Hardware, bridge, and tuners contributing to the tone. Yeah, for sure, absolutely, right? Um, I guess finish is left. We'd like that to be thin and hard. We don't want anything soft, stealing vibration that we work so hard to send into the wood. This is a huge thing, man. People get all into finish and the wood breathing and the hardness of the finish and stuff like that. Okay, we'll just leave that one alone. The next person says the neck, uh, the tone follows the neck more than anything. This is a big one that a lot of people say. They say that uh, the, the energy going through the guitar, blah, 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 the neck, the neck joint, etc. I'll just leave that. Body wood, weight of the body, bridge saddles, and pickups at the bottom of the list. Interesting. And then this guy on the bottom, I kind of like this dude. I don't know who he was, but I like this dude a lot. Uh, the player, the player, the player. Duh. Absolutely. For sure. Next, the guitar's pickups and other electronics. Obviously. The guitar's hardware makes a huge amount of sense. The construction of the guitar, chambering of the body, and the guitar's scale length are examples. This is really important. And then the wood and the materials that the guitar is built from. Okay, so this is really cool. We've got, this is a, on one page, this is probably 90% of all the guitar myths that people have come up with or people that have stuck in their heads about what they think makes good guitar tone is pretty much on this one graphic right here. And this was awesome of Jim to be able to put this together. I was surprised at how different their lists were from each other. Me and too. These factors inconsistent. In mind, I needed a test Very guitar inconsistent. that I could hack up and change parts on without feeling stress. So I bought a kit for $100 and put it together. Great soldering iron. I've got one of those. I tested it against my Tom Anderson Tele because almost everything about the Anderson is different than the parts caster. Right off the bat, these guitars sound a lot different, right? The only difference here, and with any test in this video, is the guitars. 
Everything after the guitar is identical. And everything before the guitar, so the player, the picks, the strings, the spot on the strings where the pick hits, how hard the pick hits, how fast the pick hits, all of that is controlled as tightly as I can. So the People will be critical of how he does this. But there's only so much you can do to this duplicate this, long, this as a human it. being. So I started chipping away at it. The first thing I did was replace the pickup in the parts caster with a Seymour Duncan vintage stack and tested that. And after testing that... Totally changed the guitar. Anderson, totally changed it. Vintage stack. Still different. Still different. Then I tried a pickup high Way test. different. The pickup was set at kind of a medium level, so then I cranked it down really low and then up really high to see if that made a difference. After that, I continued forward through a bunch of tests, including standing the headstock down to a normal shape. No difference at all. Having a loose versus tight neck joint. I tried brass saddles versus... That was one of my favorite ones. The peg head size and the loose neck joint, because people go on and on and on and on about that. Is there a difference in the sound? We'll get into that later. Steel. Using a traditional thin steel ashtray bridge instead of the longer, thicker steel bridge that came with the kit. I tried top loading the strings versus putting the strings through the body. Almost no difference. And I tried using a strap bridge with no plate. When I did the no plate test, the crude pickup mount I fashioned wasn't very stable, and I couldn't keep the pickup in one spot. The differences I noticed even during the same take based on tiny amounts the pickup was moving frustrated me because I couldn't accurately test the strap bridge, and I hadn't really been paying close attention to how close the pickup was to the strings. So I started to wonder whether the tests I had done were even valid, and if any difference heard between the bridges or the neck joint or the headstock shape was just from the pickup being slightly different distances from the strings before and after the modifications I had done. This came to a head when I was testing necks and I would put the parts caster neck on my blue strat copy to see how much difference an unfinished maple fretboard neck had from a finished rosewood fretboard neck. The heel angle didn't exactly match, so the action was ridiculously high, and I made the prediction before testing that with the strings so far away, the tone would sound weaker no matter what the differences in the necks were. The neck pocket's wrong, the angle's wrong, so it all kind of makes sense that this would so be wrong. So I asked wrong. myself, what if I militantly matched the distance from the pickup to the strings? Ding, I ding, 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 ding. measured the distance from the low E string to the pickup and the high E string to the pickup on my Anderson and matched it as close as I could on the parts caster. Then I tested it. This. All right, so now we have almost an identical. Sorry about the uh, screen stop, Jim, if you watch this. Kind of awkward. Anyway, absolutely, almost completely perfect tone match between these two guitars at this point. Uh, could we get super clinical with that and pick it apart? Absolutely. However, we're going to talk about why we won't do that uh, after this, but, and why it's irrelevant to do that. But, Pick up height, pick up height, pick up height. Number one thing. And making sure that the pickup is matched to the other guitar 
has made the number one most biggest difference in all of these tests. There were little differences along the way, but the number one biggest one was pickup height. It was a turning point for me. There were a lot of things different about these two guitars, and not a lot that was the same. At this point in testing, here's a list of all the things that these two guitars had in common. I became more interested in testing the things that were on this list, and a big one was the guitar body. What if I took a radically different approach? Could it sound the same as my Anderson? Now it gets We're interesting. In the barn, and it's time to pick a new guitar. So. He didn't even tap test it. I call BS on the whole thing. He didn't even tap test it at all. <laughs> this is fantastic. This is the 2x4 guitar. It was made from a piece of scrap wood bolted to a neck from a 72 reissue thinline telly. The neck has a thick finish on it and a three bolt neck joint. The neck radius is 7.25 inches. Steel saddles were installed in place of the brass ones on the bridge. The strings are top loaded. The pickup was wired directly to the output jack with no electronics in between. But it had a Seymour Duncan vintage stack pickup just like the Anderson and the height had been precisely adjusted. So I tested it. Different, big difference. Big difference. I couldn't get it to exactly match. I thought maybe the bodywood does play a role, or maybe it's something to do with the neck finish. But I was no. hearing a harsh top end, so my thought was that maybe it's because I wired straight from the pickup to the output jack and didn't include any electronics to ding, bring ding, the ding, ding, ding. off to ground. So I installed electronics. Okay, so that last one uh, where he plays like those triplets going up, the tone is a little bit different. And I watched this a couple of times. And I think the biggest reason here is his hand position. I think he has to hold the guitar differently. Uh, all the other tone samples in this group, two by four versus guitar, are very, very similar, except for that one. And I was, I was trying to figure out why. And I really think it's because he has to hold the guitar kind of funny because it's a two by four. Um, which makes a big difference how you hold a guitar. It's so that's, you know, your hand on, on the neck is a big thing, but listen to the rest of it. The 2x4 versus the regular guitar, nears makes no difference, sound the same. And I know that many of you are jumping through the internet right now. Yeah, but blah, 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 compression effects, blah, clean, blah. Okay, we'll get into that afterwards, why that makes zero difference to this test in real life and why what he did is absolutely genius. We'll talk about that. So calm down for a second. We're getting there. This is getting better and better by the minute. This was the bingo moment for me. I had the data. Absolutely. I captured it on video. You Absolutely. Just saw it. At this point, here's what the two guitars did have in common. That's Almost a nothing. Small list. Almost I was satisfied nothing. with my research and ready to stop, but I had this voice in my head of all the players and builders out there who have thought about electric guitar a certain way for much longer than I have and that seeing a 2x4 plank guitar still might not be a grand enough gesture to push past deeply rooted beliefs. So I went even farther for one They still test. won't go past deeply rooted beliefs because people are going to believe, oh, this is wait, the air what? Guitar. I made it out of a bench and a shelf. My dad made the bench in 1990 for repairing motorcycles. 
The shelf is upside down, sitting on two chairs and weighted down with a pair of Honda engines. So it's a proper vintage bench. The ends of the shelf are braced against proper the Proper vintage engines. Four, so the strings don't pull the shelf closer to the bench when tuned up. The headstock is a piece of wood with tuners put in it. Love it. The nut is the bottom half of a metal locking nut meant to go with a Floyd Rose type bridge. Love 25 it. 25 and a half inches away are the steel saddles on the steel top loaded <laughs> This is fantastic. The vintage stack mounted in the plate and all of that screwed into the bench. The pickup is wired to a disembodied tele control plate with a 250k volume pot. Sounds like a horror movie. This is wired to a jack and a guitar cable goes from the jack straight to my Probably computer. is to some tone wood purists. The air guitar was tuned to open D and so was my Anderson tele. I matched their pickup heights and strummed an open chord on both multiple times on the same spot on the strings. Here are the things that the Anderson and the air guitar had in common. Tuning, strings, scale length, pickup, pickup distance to strings, pickup position along the strings, pickup slant angle, and effective volume pop value. Okay, we're gonna stop it right there because uh, I think to get his kind of final view on all of this, you should go watch the rest of his video. There's just a couple of minutes left of it. Okay, so audio quality, video quality might have been a little different on that one just because the way we have to record and screen share and all that stuff, I do it through my live streaming software. So anyway, so let's chat about this a little bit. First of all, let's go through some of the the changes that he made that were very, very subtle. So we start talking about uh, peg head size. We start talking about stuff in the neck pocket, which was fantastic. He put bubble wrap in the neck pocket. Can you hear a difference between those two things? If you watch it over and over, you could probably start to pick out stuff. But in passing and just listening to it, no, totally not. I mean, it's fine. It's totally fine. Um, if then the other thing that people are going to get into is well yeah but he wasn't playing clean his guitar was his amp was always a little bit dirty which it was he was playing through that car and it was it was but the thing is it was a seymour uh duncan stacked pickup those are hit a, hit an amp really really hard so unless you have like a 100 watt amp or a 50 watt amp set certain way it's going to be tough to get that 100 percent clean anyway and why it doesn't matter at all. So then he started trying it with compression and with overdrive with the, was it Nobles or something? Overdrive. And everybody's like, yeah, well, it all sounds the same once you put overdrive to it. People say that all the time. I think it's a bunch of crap. And here's why. Because it's how you really play the guitar. You don't play a guitar in a lab. You play it on a stage. You play it in the studio. You play it... And, and you make a sound that you like. The guitar doesn't have to sound like another guitar. It doesn't, if you have two guitars that sound exactly the same, you should just have one guitar. There's no point in making two guitars sound exactly the same. But for the scientific purposes of this, he's trying to do it, I imagine, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I would imagine that he's trying, he structured those tests in the way that he is comfortable playing and kind of what his sound is, what his ear hears. Like that's probably his basic clean tone is that Tom Anderson uh, through that car combo. I bet if you were to chat with him about his rig, that's probably the, the amp and combo that he's familiar with. Kind of like me with my SG Junior into like a Princeton or something, you know, a clean Fender amp. That's like kind of my thing. That's what I start with before I start building. So it's something that he's familiar with. It's his sound and that's what he was able to find. When we start to listen to this stuff, a lot of people are gonna be like, yeah, but I, but here's the part. Yeah, but I can kind of hear a little difference between, but we don't listen to music that way. We just don't. You do not sit there with headphones and if if you have to listen to something so hard and be like, okay, I think I kind of hear a difference if I, 
then are you really hearing a difference? If you plug in a guitar and you're like, ugh, that sounds kind of bad. Sort of like at the beginning when he had the kit guitar with the kit pickup in it, with the pickup height all wrong, and it was like, oh yeah, that's a huge, like, whoa, right? Obviously, that's gonna be where you're gonna start to hear those things and where it really makes a difference. Once it gets to the point where we're so clinical that we have to listen to it with headphones in a controlled environment, five times before we can really start to pick something apart and you're going to be like well you just don't have the ear we all have different ears we all hear different things but the thing is is that if you are that clinical about this then are you a guitar nerd or are you a guitar player are you like a guitar nerd or a music lover you know i mean why are we even here? Like, what are we even doing? We're playing guitar because it's playing guitar. It's having fun, not tearing apart somebody's tone, right? And so that's why I think it's kind of funny to dive into all of this. I love what Jim did here because this is literally, for all intents and purposes, for normal people, which is 99.9% .9 of people who listen to music, except for that one guitar nerd who's trying to check out your pedal board and look down on you for the type of gear that you play. 99.9% .9 of people will watch his video and go, oh yeah, it sounds great, it's fine. I'm kind of in that camp because, not because I can't hear the difference, not because I couldn't pick it apart if I wanted to, but because of what's important. Um, so what is important? The pickup is massive to the sound of a guitar. 100%. Above that even, before you ever replace pickups, we're talking about pickup height and making sure that it's adjusted to your liking to get the tone you want. Chances are you'll get mostly there with just that. The guitar setup. If the guitars were set up completely differently, like the Strat neck versus the Tele neck, then it would have been terrible and the guitar would have sounded terrible and that wasn't even a relevant test because the setup wasn't right. Setup pick up pick up height and pot selection to make sure that you didn't have the right wrong pick pots and cap and stuff in the guitar 100% the most important things and the player i mean the player the end anyway i wanted to share this with you because i just think it's really cool i think it's he jim you did a fantastic job 100% and i should say that I actually reached out to him in an Instagram message and I was like, dude, I'm gonna do a reaction <laughs> video to your video because this is fantastic, you are a genius, and I want to break it down uh, from a technical perspective, uh, how I feel about it anyway. Get in the comments and chat about it. Be nice, obviously, uh, but this is fantastic stuff. Make sure you check out the rest of our videos. Uh, the end of the week, we've got, well, we've got uh, gear news on Wednesday. Uh, we've got a live stream on Thursday. We've got a lot of fun stuff. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you in the next one.